Okay, so we're doing a we're doing a podcast here, and this podcast is really to meet different people who are involved in the real estate industry in some fashion, whether it be people selling real estate, people investing in real estate, people building real estate portfolios, you know, people who are financing real estate deals. I'm pretty heavily involved in real estate myself. I've been buying a lot of real estate. I do my own property developments and I work with some really gun people. And one of those joins me today, Greg Bloom from First Street Finance. He's here with us. So um, yeah, Greg, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and you know how, how you got here today. Hey Pete, thanks for having me on, much appreciated. Um, so, my story is um, I'm actually from South Africa originally. I come from the same cloth as you. I'm a, a chartered accountant by profession. Uh, did that for a number of years. Um, and then when I moved to Australia for my wife, or then girlfriend, um, after working for a little bit, I, I got a role at a finance and uh, financial advice and mortgage business called Yellow Brick Road, um, which got me sort of understanding the finance world and what it's all about. Um, after two years working in, a, in an accounting capacity then, an analyst role, I decided I really wanted to um, fulfill my purpose in life. And um, I, it took me quite a while to work out what that was because, um, you know, we, when we go to university, we study, you know, you, you always think that there's this mountain that you're climbing and then you get to the top and you realize, well, you're not at the top. You're just at another, you know, at another, um, there's a whole other mountain in front of you. Yeah, yeah. So it really, it really was a good opportunity for me to, to reflect on what I wanted to do. And I realized what I wanted to do was to help people, yeah. to work with people, and to be self-employed. So those were my main objectives. And that's how I sort of got into the world of becoming an advisor and mortgage broker. And um, thankfully, I, uh, um, I've done a really good job at it and built a really successful business. Yeah, um, yeah. You, doing all of those things. Yeah, you, you're doing a, obviously a great job at it. Just stepping back there in the conversation a little bit. So was your girlfriend now wife, is she Australian or is she South African? She's an Aussie. She's, <laughs> she's yeah, born and bred. Okay. And um, luckily we've uh, been able to settle here. I mean, with this whole COVID situation. Yeah. Um, you know, you've never been more, we've, I've never been more thankful to be in Australia, to be an Australian now. Yeah. Um, you know, what a beautiful place. I mean, I know you're across the world. You see probably a different side at the moment, but um, yeah, just, just so lucky. So lucky to be in the lucky country. Yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely the lucky country. And then did you guys meet in, how did you meet? How did you and your, your wife meet? Yeah, we, we met uh, about five or 10 years before we, uh, before I moved. Uh, we never really kept in contact and we've got mutual friends. And then when I came over for a wedding one year, um, we decide we we hooked up again, and thankfully right. I was able to move to Australia and start a world here. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's a that's a that's a great story. And then when you were working for Yellow Brick Road, were you at that time? Did you have thoughts about oh, I what I really want to do is start my own business, or you know what what was it that had you kind of transition out of Yellow Brick Road into more you know running your own business? I don't know if it's because my dad was self-employed or I don't know if it's a cultural thing or a, um, um, you know, societal thing, but yeah. I've always, I've always wanted to be, to, to be the master of my own destiny. Yeah. I always wanted to, I wanted to be able to make the change that I wanted to change. And, and, you know, and also to be frank, I just, I didn't want any ceiling on, on my earning capacity. And um, I wanted to know that if I worked really hard and was really lucky and um, I could, you know, achieve what I wanted to achieve. Yeah, okay. And then did you ever work as a chartered accountant or it was just not really, you did that? Because, I mean, it's a great qualification to have. It's probably the, sure. the, the bet in Australia in particular, it's probably the highest level financial qualification that you can get. It's probably the most esteemed. And I, speaking yeah. from experience, it's the hardest one to get. Um, <laughs> did you ever like work in accounting or did you? Yeah. So I did um, the, the the program in in South Africa is a little bit different to Australia. Yeah, it's um, it's very focused on the the audit and um, the audit component when becoming an accountant. Yeah, um, so I did that to to gain my qualification. Did it for about five years, 
Yep. So I was, I was a practicing accountant for a number of years, but I think in South Africa, there's um, a lot of people in finance will do a chartered accountancy, but not actually practice yeah. just as a back. And I think, I mean, if, if I reflect on my qualifications, I, I, I would say that would have a massive impact on where I am today. Not yeah. because I necess necessarily have incredibly varied skills that allow me to be more specialized, but I think when I'm working with clients, I'd like to say that I'm a generalist. Yeah. So I know financial advice, I know uh, mortgages, and I know tax, right? Yeah, Am yeah. I a tax expert like Pete Driscoll? Certainly not, right? Yeah. I, but I can probably work out what the things that you should discuss with Pete. Right? Yeah, yeah. I say, you probably should speak to your accountant about X, Y, Z, or you know, you understand the tax implications of these different things. Um, so I think that's been a huge, a huge benefit for me in, in building my business because you know, there's lots of um, unscrupulous or, 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 or maybe not uneducated uh, you know, operators. And when people see that you've you know, spent seven years at university and qualifying to be a professional, you, know, you really do, do get, uh, you know, step, you're a step ahead of the rest. Yeah, definitely. And I, like I know from conversations we've had, um, it, it certainly enables you to have uh, more kind of meaningful, intelligent conversations because you have this broad view of what business is, what people are doing with their finances. And it's also, I think you said something quite important there to kind of know where your expertise starts and finishes so that you can recognize what's going on somewhere else, but not necessarily have to try and solve it. I think a lot of people can get into trouble by taking advice from people who aren't experts in a particular field. And uh, yeah, I think that was a really great point you made there. Now it's with, um, so moving out of Yellow Brick Road, then you, you started with First Street. Do you want to tell me a little bit about, you know, what it is you're doing there and, um, how you got in there and what, what the experience so, was yeah. like there? So, so I started a Yellow Brick Road franchise with two business partners in yep. 2013, I think it was. And that was a really great experience because being involved in a franchise operation, you do have access to, to better training, better mentoring, et cetera. Um, but by the time I finished up after the two years that I was with, with that branch or as a co-owner, I realized that, I don't want to have my business tied to a franchise. I want to, I want to be the master of my own destiny. And when you're involved with a franchise that, you know, you, you are tied to the ship. So um, I was working out what I wanted to do thereafter. And fortunately I got really good at legal advice when I set up that business. So when we dissolved the business, it was a very, um, I wouldn't say it was a painless process, yeah. but it was very prescriptive because we had shareholders agreements in that specified yeah. that if this happens, and my advice to anyone having gone through the experience, the more time you can spend doing that upfront with good professionals, um, the easier the back end is going to be because going into business with people, you're not getting married. You're just dating because yeah. every single business will, will expire at some stage, whether it's after two years or 22 years. And the problem of dissolving that business will only get bigger over time. Um, yeah, I hear I'm what sure you, you say. I'm sure you see it all the time. Oh, look, I've, I've seen numerous occasions, like I've even seen it, like people will come to me um, as an accountant and they'll, they'll ask for some advice or give them some advice. And then rather than pay to get the full advice or even the same with lawyers, rather than pay to get those agreements in place, they decide, oh, no, I'm going to save a bit of money. I'm going to get, do it cheaply. And I've seen like catastrophic things happen because just... It's, it's a little bit of people, you know, um, saving pennies that later cost them thousands, if in some cases, tens, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Just by taking those steps up front, you can avoid a lot of that heartache down the track. Even, I'm saying even if you do the best job possible, there's still going to be issues, you know. So you're just minimizing the number of issues by doing, you know, by doing good shareholders agreement and, and having, you know, being on the same um, a lot of people think, oh, well, we've discussed what we would do if we dissolved the business. Well, my, my suggestion is yeah. people have got very short memories, right? Yeah. <laughs> Put it in writing so, and get advice in it. So, so that all happened. And thankfully, a good relationship with ex-business partners and they're good people. And um, when I was looking, you know, does, do I start Greg Bloom Finance and do my own thing? Do I partner up with other businesses? And uh, First Street's a business that 
to be honest, I was considering joining before joining it first, uh, Yellow Brick Road. Yep. And I landed up reconnecting with First Read. And First Read is, um, was founded by a guy by the name of Jeremy Fisher, one of the most successful mortgage brokers in the country. Yeah. And Jeremy's model was, um, I make lots of money writing lots of loans all by myself. I just want to work with really successful professionals. Yeah. And so we built a sort of a collective here where we all share the, the, the costs to run the business and manage the business. And basically there's about, you know, in my office in Rose Bay, there's offices all over. There's about eight of us here. And everyone is collegial, even though we're competing with each other, essentially. Yeah. Um, we're all sort of running the race together. And it's a very uh, collegial environment and very high performance. So everyone yeah, here. I mean, you guys, you yeah. guys have probably the best reputation in the market. Like I've talked to a lot of real estate guys. And as soon as I mentioned First Street, they go, yeah, those guys are definitely top shelf kind of guys. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do together is probably... Um, real estate driven now some of it's people buying their own home like we're starting to move into that kind of luxury market where we've got guys buying some pretty expensive real estate around sydney so we're servicing those guys you know we really like those kind of guys they're very switched on people we're dealing with um, but we're also dealing with you know pretty savvy investors as well wanting to get into the investment property market and i mean it's good the approach we have where like i spoke earlier like people knowing the limitations of their expertise is that I can, you know, I have a lot of clients coming to me wanting to save tax by investing in real estate. So I can handle that kind of tax conversation with them. And then, you know, we work in tandem there on the financing side, you know, what sort of advice or suggestions would you give to people who are looking to, um, it might be pull some equity out of their home or they've got a deposit and they want to get into that investment property scene. What sort of advice would you give those people? Yeah, I suppose I would be I would be speaking to a professional, whether it's your, you know, I would I would certainly always use a mortgage broker over your local bank. They've got a much yeah. broader breadth of knowledge and product um, specific to the client's needs. So I would be scoping out what are the things you need to do to position your application as best as possible. So whether you're self-employed, are your financials up to date? You know, do your do your numbers, um, you know, your figures and your and, and all your your profit and revenue and whatnot. Does that substantiate what sort of your expectations are in terms of what, you know, what value property you can purchase? Um, I would also be, you know, protecting your credit record. People neglect the fact that, you know, every time you go for a credit card, every time you take a new car loan, um, that impacts on your credit, credit file. So um, I, I would suppose just being open and honest with your advisors is very important. So, you know, not trying, to, not trying to squirrel away information that you don't think is relevant. The more, the more information, the more context that, um, you know, your, your broker, your advisors or your accountants have on your circumstances, the better able we are to, to guide the clients in terms of their, their options. And I think one of the, the, the greatest confusions that clients have, right, is that they think, ah, oh, I've got a lot of equity, therefore I should be able to buy property. Yeah. Or... I've got a lot of income, therefore I should be able to buy property. And unfortunately, in this modern finance world, you need both, right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you've got a $20 million investment portfolio and you make zero, zero dollars per year, right? You cannot lend. There's no one who's going to really lend to you, right? Yeah. And vice versa, if you don't have a dollar to your name, but you make 300 grand a year and spend most of it, you're probably also going to struggle. Yeah. Right? So people need to understand that there's, you know, I always say to my client, there's a matrix, right? The one is earnings and the other one is deposit. And you need to have both of those. It doesn't help if you've got one or the other. So, yeah. um, you know, I like to work with my clients and say, okay, well, you've got, you know, got 50 grand now. We know that you need 80 grand to get into that right property. We're looking at your savings pattern. That's, you know, 1500 bucks a month over the next two years, or whatever the case is. And that's what we, we're working towards. So it might not necessarily be what you can do today, but it's just about positioning what you can do, you know, to meet your objectives of purchasing a property. Yeah, look, I'm, I think you raise a really good point there. And the clients that we like working with the most are ones that we're going to develop lifetime relationships with. We're not kind of transactionally driven people. Like, sure, we like to help people close the deal and get it done. But I mean, I, I think one of the biggest benefits with a broker, say, versus a bank is that, 
you know, often people are going to the bank and they'll come to, to you or come to me and they'll say, I can get a better rate there. And they get so hooked in on the rate that they don't realize that there may be a couple of points difference in the rate, but they don't realize all of the different fees and what's going to happen in 12 months time and what's happening here, that they don't understand the full package of what they're signing up to. Whereas a broker, he's using every possible trick he's got to get to every possible lender to get that client the best possible deal. Um, so, th- I mean, that's what I think. What, what, what would you say on that, Greg? Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, like, like we were mentioning earlier in terms of your breadth of knowledge and experience, yeah. you know, rate is just one factor, right? But making sure you structured correctly for, you know, for tax purposes, for investments, the, 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 the level of advice goes into guiding a client, you know, properly through the process is massive. So, yeah. um, you know, we add a lot more value than just finding you the best rate. And my, my sort of opinion on brokers is that I think we're the modern financial, we are the modern day private bankers, right? For, yeah. for every mom and pop. We yeah. know you. We understand what's going on in your life. We, you know, we may not speak to you every day, but every year, every six months, every 12 months when we're reviewing your loans, we know what you're about, right? Yeah. And um, we're able to understand what you're working towards much better than, you know, an employee at a bank who after two years will pass your file, file over to a new colleague who's taken their job because they've moved on. You know, we've got really good longevity with our clients. And, and yeah, and that's a huge competitive advantage for us. Yeah. And I think that particularly with like, I mean, our general attitude is we're not trying to help anyone get rich quick. What we're trying to do is build indestructible wealth for families and for individuals so that it's not that um, they can, like we're looking so that they never go backwards. They just keep, get, it keeps getting better and better. And one of the, like you say, with when you walk into a branch, it's very transactionally driven. They just want you to sign up for that loan. Whereas what I've seen with you, you're looking at it and going, okay, so if, if we do this in this situation here, this is the impact it's going to have in two years' time or in 12 months' time. So it's a much broader and more a kind of relationship-based um, way of doing business. Now, we're interested in getting the best possible deals, but it's over the long term, not just that individual transaction. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just sort of shifting a little bit sideways, um, what is it that um, what is it that sort of keeps you motivated? Because I mean, you, you're I, I'm like you're one of my favorite people to deal with because <laughs> I think every conversation we have is a great conversation. Like this, I don't think we've ever had a bad word with each other. We've worked like side by side for a number of years now, and we're talking pretty much daily. Um, what is it that keeps you, you know? like enthused and motivated is it you know supporting your family is it helping your clients is it both is it yeah tell me a little bit about that yeah it's a, it's a good question it's a good question because you know covid covid's been a really strange time for everyone right yeah thankfully thankfully my business has been pretty strong through covid so it's been really busy and there's been a lot going on yeah um but you know so, so obviously we've got all technology within our business now, which allows us to teleconference with everyone. It's become more socially acceptable. And, you know, I was commenting to one of my business partners saying, it's amazing how, more, how much more efficient our jobs have become because, you know, we don't have to spend, you know, 30 minutes in a car visiting a client or, yeah. you know, having, you know, it's all like on Zoom, 30 minutes later, you know, you're back on the next, working on your next client. Yeah. Um, and then he said to me, I went, he went to a client meeting that night and he said, it was, it was, you, it were reminded him just how much he missed that. Yeah. That was part of the job that we, we enjoy the most. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so COVID's, to be honest, it has, we struggled a little bit from that personal interaction side. Yeah. 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 Now they said, keep motivated and, you know, and it's, I'm not selling the positives here. I'm just telling you sort of the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, but, we love, I mean, being a broker uh, predominantly, I mean, how amazing is it? I, I help people. I mean, I'm trying to explain it to my five-year-olds. Daddy, what yeah. do you do for work? Yeah. You know, I say to them, well, I go to the bank, I get money for people so that they can put a roof over their head and have a home. Like what a cool thing to be able to do, you know, it's such yeah. a, a life, you know, like 
you know, and it doesn't matter because I've got clients who borrow $5 million and $500,000. So yeah. I've got the full gamut and it doesn't matter because $500,000 is just as much money to that person as a $5 million loan is to that. Yes. Yeah. It's about the dream. And, isn't it? and, you know, exactly. It's all about that. And it's about, you know, oh my goodness, Greg, like this is a enormous sum of money that I'm you know borrowing here. Thanks for holding my hand through this really complicated and, you know, and minefield of lending. And it really is, right? Like, yeah, that's why we yeah. exist. If it was super easy, you just go online, type a few things into the thing, and it'll tell you how much you can borrow, no problems. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, so we... we hey, I, know, have a, I, have a, I have a question for you on that. What was your, what was your five-year-old's response when you explained it to her? <laughs> they couldn't understand it. They still don't understand it. <laughs> they know that... I, they know that I help lend money to people. That, that's okay. about as far, and I help homes. They can't really stitch it together yet. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm hoping. I'm working on them. I'm yeah, working uh, on that's them great. Over the next couple of years. That, that's great because you got you got twins, haven't you? I've got uh, actually. I just turned six uh, wow. two weeks ago. Six-year-old twin girls and fun. another little three-year-old. Yeah, that's yeah, going crazy, fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, I mean. What's next in store for you? Like, where are you going career-wise? You know, have you got what, what goals, even your own personal financial goals, if you want to share those, or, you know, what you want to do with your family and, and, and do for fun and that kind of stuff? What do you see yeah. the future is ahead for you? No more kids, that's for okay. sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, mean, not, I mean, I haven't had the snip yet, so not yeah. that for sure, but okay. um, uh, for now. Um, yeah, I think this year, my New Year's resolution was I want to work smart. I want to yep. learn to work smart because I think um, I've always been a hard worker. I've always been a high achiever. Yeah, I've always studied really hard, got good marks, you know, worked really hard. Um, and as your business grows, and I mean, you know very well, probably more than me even, working hard, you cap out. Yeah. Right? You, there's only so many clients you can help. There's only so, much, so many things you can do in a day. Um, I need to learn to work smart. So that's what this year is really about for me. I want to be able to become more efficient. I want to become, you know, I want to, you know, I've got a minimum service level that I provide to my clients. And, you know, I can't afford to let that slip because that's my competitive advantage. Yeah. So I need to make sure that I'm a step ahead of that so that I can continue to provide that service to my clients. And I can see over the next couple of years that will be a problem. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're interviewing someone tomorrow for better analyst role that'll make a big difference within the business and you know improve our uh, our ability to you know service our clients um and then you know in terms of my own personal goals i suppose you know hopefully that can relieve a bit of my my time so i can um obviously service my clients better on a personal level yeah but also have a bit more time for me and my family and you know i think being self-employed and i mean you you know as well is that it is so hard to divide work and 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 pleasure yeah. right yeah like going on holiday, like it's impossible, right? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Sorry, um, sorry, Dave. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know you're buying that property, but I'm away this week, so good yeah, luck yeah. doing your own or, or that loan that needs to be approved and it's urgent. Like it I'm going to get that stuff done, whether I'm on holiday or it's a Sunday or, you know, so working smart, yeah. I'm hoping is going to solve that for me. Yeah, and look, I, I mean, I kind of been thinking about that a bit myself late. Right? And I think one of the smartest things that you can do in terms of working smart is surround yourself with great people. And I mean, yeah. it's been like, I mean, my relationship having you working with us, it's been of such a benefit to me because I know that I, I, I don't I don't have to explain too much to you. I hand you a particular client. I know the level of service you provide. I know that you've got the intelligence to be able to deal with them. So I think part of that working smart is just selecting the right people to be working with. It makes an enormous difference to how quickly you can grow your business. 100%. Yeah. 100%. yeah. And resourcing as well, having good staff, right? Yeah. You're only as good as your, you know, your, your worst staff member so yeah, you know right. and we work in a high performance business where you know, everyone here is on you know we would be in the top we'd be in the top five percent of brokers in australia yeah. all of my business partners yeah and you know we can't afford to have people here who are not in the top five percent of whatever yeah. they do because that's going to bring us down yeah for sure so, and that's a huge sure. challenge but uh 2021, the year. Yeah, yeah, done. definitely. So let just just wrapping up then, Greg, I mean, how do people get in touch with you? And, you know, how can they help you expand your business? And how can you best help them? 
Yeah, so um, you can go to the First Street web, web First Street website yep. um, to contact us. Alternatively, obviously, you know, any clients that you speak to and you interact with, you know, obviously you're more than welcome to pass my details on to them. Yeah. Um, but that's probably the easiest way. Email is greg at firststreet.com.au. Um, but uh, I'm available. When, okay, when, great. When, when and if. Great. Well, we will keep flowing you lots of clients because you're doing a terrific job with our clients. We're super happy to be working with you. And uh, yeah, let's make 2021 the best year yet. <laughs> Thanks so much, Pete. Have a lovely day. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Cheers.